So, okay, but first of all, I want to thank you for being here, and I want to thank uh, Jean-Francois and Nicolas for organizing this, this event, which I know wasn't easy at all. And I want to thank uh, also the cameraman for his work today. And so, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to talk about uh, all these things, but in a, in a very el elementary uh, manner. And so here, Brownian geometry means the scaling limits or, of uh, planar uh, maps, but without easing model or something like this, just uniform objects. So, uh, okay. So I'm going to, to focus in one precise model, uh, which is the Brownian plane. And then at the end, if I have enough time, I will explain how to extend the same kind of results to other models. So for me here, what is the Brownian plane? But the Brownian plane is a set of points, P infinity, a root, just a point inside where, uh, which where, uh, we observe this, the, the space, a distance, delta, and a measure uh, inside the Brownian plane. So it's some, like a, an analog of the Lebesgue measure, but in our uh, random space. So this object is called the Brownian plane because even if it's um, uh, random, uh, it is almost surely uh, homeomorphic to the plane. So it has the, uh, the geometry of the plane, so we can do some uh, ge geometry inside. So we can define this object in a direct way in the continuous, but the reason why we study it is because it appears as a scaling limit of uh, discrete uh, models. And for example, two very natural ways to obtain it is well, the following. We can take, for example, a quadrangulation of the sphere with n faces, and uh, we, okay, we consider the graph distance, and we know that the typical diameter of this object is n power one fourth, and if we rescale everything by n power one fourth, we obtain the Brownian uh, map or the Brownian sphere. And here what we are going to do is just, we are going to, to rescale in a slower uh, uh, way. No? We are going to take a n going to infinity, but, but slower than n power one fourth. And if you consider this, this object and you take the limit when n goes to infinity, you obtain uh, the Brownian plane, the Brownian plane arise. And okay, the, just a technical thing, as here the, the scaling limits are not compact spaces, the good notion of convergence is the local uh, goal of, uh, of the uh, topology, uh, okay, which is in some sense like the local uh, topology that, that we have seen in the, in, the, in the last talk. And another way to obtain it is to consider the uniform uh, infinite planar quadrangulation, and you rescale distances by lambda, and you let lambda go to zero, and you obtain also the Brownian plane. These are two ways to obtain it from discrete uh, models. Uh, the first one uh, was proven by Bauer, Miamoy, and Ray in a paper where they characterize all the possible limits of uh, quadrangulation with, with boundary, and the, the second convergence was stated by uh, Curia and Le Gall, and okay, uh, six years uh, ago, and okay, they give also geometric properties of this continuous space. Yeah, the first convergence also comes from the Yes, also comes, but uh, like this, I can uh, talk about two, two works. Uh, ah, okay, so the iPad is. is is well no uh, okay so as we have a continuous uh, okay as we have a root and a distance we can uh, consider the cactus representation of our uh, object and what is this it's just you take the root and you represent each uh, point of the brownian plane by its distance to the root so you obtain something like this and for example here for the level r what you have these points here are just the points which are exactly at distance r from the root. So this object here in blue is just uh, the ball of radius r. And in this talk, uh, the ball of radius r is a close subset of the Brownian plane. It's the boundary is, is inside. And as you have the topology of the, of the plane, if you remove the ball of radius, of radius r, uh, you have only one uh, unbound connect component, 
which is the red zone here. And uh, we are going to denote this uh, just uh, B, uh, B check R. And just for, for to, to fix some notations, uh, OK, I will denote by BR uh, bullet there, there, the ball of radius R, when we add all the finite connect components of the complement. And uh, OK, I will add a dot also to the B check just to, to say that we, co we take the, the unbounded connect component and we add the boundary. So these are two uh, very uh, natural subsets of the Brownian plane to to consider and a very natural question. Here are two very natural questions: is what is the, the distribution of the closure of the uh, unbounded connect component, and what is the dependency between, well, okay, the the blue part and the red part? So the blue part is is called for the one who knows uh, the L of radius R of the Brownian plane. Okay, and if you think about what is happening in the discrete world. Or for example, you can consider the peeling, some kind of peeling process like uh, in the last talk. Uh, what we expect to happen is that, okay, if you have a big quadrangulation and you explore it from the root, uh, what, we ha what, we, what you, the unexplored uh, part only depends on, on the explored part by the boundary. So in some sense, what we expect is that all the information of the all the information of the all of radius R is uh, is encoded in uh, the length in the length of the uh, of this uh, boundary here. And if you think also in of this work of Bauer, Mirmo, and Ray, what we expect here to have here in the red part is uh, like a very big uh, quadrangulation with a boundary and. In the scaling limit, we expect to have an infinite Brownian disk, infinite volume Brownian disk. Okay. So now the questions are more or less clear, but we have the set of points, but we haven't defined a distance inside it, and we haven't uh, defined uh, a measure or, and so on. So now I, I'm going to fix m more the definition. For example, it's not clear how to define the boundary, the length of the boundary. So you can try just to use the, okay, you have here something that, like a Jordan curve here. So you, you can uh, try to compute this length using the distance, but it's a fractal object. So you are going to obtain infinity. And so you don't have any information there. So a good way to define the boundary DD length is just, you're going to consider a little annulus here. So just to consider the points that are at distance R plus epsilon of the boundary. And okay, this is formally this, this is this subset. Okay, because if you are, as the Brownian plane is a length space, is you the distance of these points here uh, are a distance R plus epsilon of the root. Okay, if you take this, you com you can compute the measure the, the volume of this subset, and if you Riskalize in a good way is epsilon square. You obtain a non-degenerated limit when epsilon goes to, to zero, and this will be our notion of boundary length. Okay, and now we need to define a distance in the all of radius R and in the unbounded connect component. And so it's not so clear what we have to 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 use there because we want to have independency properties, so we need to, to, to think a little bit. So first of all, as I have just said, uh, the Brownian plane is a length space, which means, in fact, that the distance between two points is uh, the smallest length of a path connecting uh, these two points. It's even a geodesic space, so the, the infimum is realized. OK, so if we think, OK, just here you have the the, defi the natural definition of the length of a, of a path. And so we, we have three candidates to the distance, for example, for the unbounded connect component. And we, we are going to do exactly the same for the L. We have th three possibilities. And OK, the first one, very naive, is just you consider the restriction distance 
in your unbounded connect component. But the problem here is that, for example, if you take two points, the distance could be realized by a path which uh, goes to the, uh, inside the hole, and so you are using information that you don't want to use. So this is, a, is not a good candidate if you want to, to have uh, independency properties. The second one that you can uh, consider and is more natural is just to say, OK, I don't want to, to see what's happening in the hull, so above, and I'm going to consider just the path that, touch, that, uh, that stays inside the, uh, the, the inbound connect component, the closure of the inbound connect component. And in some sense, this is a good idea, but it's not going to, to, to work, or at least it's not going to work in full generality, because, uh, okay, if you have your unbound connect component here, and you have two points that are very close here, close with respect to the boundary, okay, to the smallest uh, path connecting them, is not going to, to look what's happening uh, in the Earl of Radius R. But if you have two points in, on the boundary, now, well, the smallest path is going to cross. And so the problem is that, in fact, if your path is going to touch, if it touch the, the boundary a fractal number of times, then you are using, in fact, the, the information of the, uh, of the, of the, all of radius R, in fact. So you are not going to have really uh, independence C, uh, as we want. And so the good candidate is you're going to, to, to consider only the path that stays in the interior of the inbound connect component. So you don't want to touch the, the boundary. And the idea is, OK, you have this, this object, which is defined in, uh, on B, B check. And what you want is just to extend this definition by continuity to the boundary. Just to say, uh, well, just a detail, but in some sense, this to this, the, the, if, you, if you take the uh, continuous extension to the boundary, it should be the same as this distance here, but just because the Brownian geometry is nice, uh, but in general, it's not, it's not the moral thing to do in some sense. Okay, so here is the, the theorem. And what it says is that everything uh, works just fine. So that was a work uh, in collaboration with Jean-Francois Bonlugal. And what you have is that you can actually uh, extend the, by continuity the, the, the distance on the boundary and also the, the distance uh, on the hull. And conditionally to uh, the length of the boundary, well, these two, two, two spaces become independent. And uh, the inbound connect component, the infinite path, is a infinite Brownian disk in the sense of Bauer, uh, Mirmo, and Ray with the right uh, length. Okay, so here you can ask, well, what is the, the measure on the, for example, on the inbound connect component? Just to take here the restriction measure is going to, to work very well. So it's no problem there. Okay, so. And just this is, in fact, one of the results. But to obtain uh, this result, what we use is a construction of a Curian Legal of the Brownian plane using an infinite uh, disk with, uh, la with labels on it. And labels are positive and encode the distance to the root. And so when we do that, what we obtain is a, a construction of the infinite Brownian disk where we control very well the distances to the boundary. And so it's a different construction of the one of uh, uh, Bauer, Miamon, uh, and Ray. So just a, a few remarks. But the first one, I have already said it, but I think it's important, and is that if you condition on the boundary, the unbound connect component does not depend on R. And it's quite surprising in some sense, because if you don't have this conditioning, and it's the difficult part of the proof, in fact, uh, it's not clear at all that it does not depend on R. Uh, well, the, if you don't condition, it depends in a strong way on R. And the distribution of the, the L of radius R is also explicit, completely explicit, 
and is very is, is very similar to the construction of the Brownian disk. Uh, very very similar. It's not a difficult construction, and so no. Now we have uh, some kind of Markov property, and it's not the first one. So you have, uh, for example, for the Brownian sphere, it was proven by by Jean Francois that if so here you consider the the, um, the cactus representation. So if you have a root and you take the distances to the root, and if you cut so to some at some level, if you know the boundary length, the uh, the remaining part. Uh, are Brownian this with the right uh, boundary length. And with Jean-Francois Jean -Francois and myself, we proved the, the same kind of result for the Brownian disk. So here, the, distas, the distances are taken, are the distances to the, to the boundary, you know, to the, to the root. Okay, so, and in this work, we, so in some sense here, you just have one part of the picture because what you, you understand is that if you, know the boundary lengths, then you have Brownian disk or you have a Markovian property, but you need also to know what is the, the dynamic of the, of the boundary lengths. And we, we sh with Jean-Francois, uh, we state that this uh, dynamic is encoded by a continuous process, a gross fragmentation process, and this result was, was stated by, by Bertrand, Curia, and Konczynski, and, and uh, Bud also. Uh, in the discrete uh, setting uh, before us. So, okay, and a good thing is that now we have the Brownian, the infinite Brownian disk drawn inside the Brownian plane, so we can just translate any property of the Brownian plane to, any, to a property of the infinite Brownian disk directly, in some sense. And it, also, this uh, construction with where we understand very well distances to the boundary, if we take the length of the boundary go, uh, when the length of the boundary goes to infinity, we obtain a construction of the Brownian half plane, which is uh, very nice and very quite easy to, to to study and to define. And so we have also a Markov property for the Brownian half plane. Okay. So now I want to to speak about uh, maybe a more. Um, so I, I'm not going to explain how we prove that because. It relies on stochastic processes and uh, absolute continuity uh, properties of Bessel processes. So what I want is just to, to give an application which is maybe a little bit surprising, but and is I want to, to do some geometry. I want to, to talk about isoperimetric inequalities. So first, just I recall a very, well, a very easy property of the Brownian geometry and is, is the scaling invariance. So if you take the Brownian uh, plane, and you, you multiply distances by lambda, and you multiply the measure volume by lambda fourth, you have also a Brownian plane. So you can zoom in or zoom out, and you have the same object. And in, for the infinite Brownian disk, but you have the same kind of property. You take your space, you multiply your distance by lambda, your measure, which is just the restriction measure, by lambda four, and you obtain an infinite Brownian disk, where the perimeter, the, the boundary length, is multiplied by lambda square. Okay, you can see quite easy that it's a lambda square, the right exponent, by the definition that I just uh, gave of the boundary length, like, like as a limit of the volume of the of the annulus. Okay, so what I meant by isoperimetric inequalities. So for me, uh, I'm here. I'm going to consider Jordan domains, and for me, a Jordan domain is just the image, or uh, an homeomorphic image of the disk with its boundary. So just is a, a disk drawn in the Brownian plane. And I'm going to consider the subset of these uh, Jordan domains, k of, of the Jordan domains that contain the root. Okay, and our goal is to compare the length of the boundary and uh, the volume of uh, your, uh, your Jordan domain. So first, the volume is well defined because it's the Jordan domain is a closed subset and, um, and your measure here is in some sense uh, Borelian in, in, in P infinity. And the exponent one fourth is just because of the scaling. 
And the boundary length is easy to define it because you can take just a parameterization of the boundary of the length of the disk, and then you, you obtain a parameterization of the, bo the, the boundary of, of the image, and then you can compute the length of this path, and you obtain a number which does not depend on the parameterization. And so this is our notion of uh, boundary length for our Jordan domain. And we want to compare this ratio. Okay. So here is not going to, things are going to be different than in the real plane, so in the deterministic plane, because here we are going to have a random oscillation. And what we, the, the result that we have well, that is uh, the following. Uh, is that if you consider a, a function which is not decreasing, okay, so you consider the, the ratio of the length and the boundary and the volume, sorry, and you multiply by f log of the volume, this infimum is positive with probability one and probability zero. So this is not very surprising, but it's a very nice thing to have because it's not clear at all that it, this infimum is in fact a random variable. So as this event has probability 0, 1, uh, we don't have a problem there. Uh, OK, but the, what is surprising in some sense is that we have a very easy criterion to know if this quantity is equal to 1 or 0. And it's just, you just need to, to, to look at this, this, this series here. and. And okay, and if, if, if this series converges, then the, the probability is just one. And this is just an int integrability uh, criterion, and is what is. You, you should think, for example, uh, for Levy process, you have this kind of results when you want to, to control, uh, okay, um, model for continuity, or these kind of things. And so I'm going to explain now how, how we can prove this kind of result. And I'm going to, to explain why uh, the Markov property that we just state uh, is useful here. So the idea is to cut the Brownian plane. So the Brownian plane, uh, what we are going to consider is for, for a sum z here, we consider the first time for the first level such that the boundary length is equal to z. So you can just look at the boundary length as a process of the distance to the boundary and you obtain a very nice uh, process uh, that was stated by uh, Nicolai by Jean-Francois. It's a self-similar Markov process, and it's explicit. It, it only has uh, negative jumps, and it diverts to infinity at infinity. So this, uh, in some sense, stopping time is well-defined. Okay, you, you start at zero, and so, uh, sometimes you are going to be just at z. Okay, and you take your Brownian plane, you take T1, you cut here, you take TZ, TZ you cut, and you continue to do this, and so on and so on. And you, what you obtain are different annulus. And, okay, uh, more or less direct consequence of our Markov property is that this, these annulus are independent, and then just a scale, you have a scaling property just uh, the annulus at level z power n is just the same as the first one, but uh, where you multiply distance by z power n, uh, n one half. Okay, this notation is just the scaling property. And here the distances are multiplied by this quantity and the volume are multiplied by z to n. Okay, so now you have really independent parts and this is one of the, of the main tools to prove our isoperimetric inequality and uh, the second ingredient is to study a separating paths. So uh, okay so what I, I consider here is just uh, you take the infinite Brownian disk with boundary length one, so with this object here, and you look at the path that disconnects the boundary from infinity. So up here, a path, oops, what I say, uh, I say that a path disconnects 
the boundary from, infi from infinity. If this path does not touch the boundary, this is important because we want to apply our Markov property and, and okay, we have the intrinsic distance in the interior, so you don't have to touch the boundary. And that any path going from the boundary to infinity has to cross your yellow path or your red path here. And uh, what is quite surprising in some sense is that we can control pretty well the, this, uh, this quantity, which is not uh, clearly a random variable. Uh, when you first look at this problem, it's not clear at all. It is well defined, but okay, it's not. Uh, you have to prove that it is a random variable. And the result that we, we have is that the probability that this length is smaller than epsilon is controlled by a constant epsilon square and another constant epsilon square. Okay, so here I want just to, to say a, a few things. Okay, this is in fact, the, in some sense, the difficult part, one of the difficult part of this, uh, of the, uh, to state the isoparametric inequalities. And a similar result was, was stated in, in the uniform infinite planar coagulation by Jean-Francois and Thomas Leresy, where they state in, in the case of the, of the uniform infinite planar coagulation, they state that the, the, the smallest length uh, disconnecting the all of radius R, this object here is, uh, okay, what they state is small than one constant epsilon two minus delta for any delta. Okay, the, the constant depends on delta. And using this, uh, they also state some constant here, uh, epsilon cubic. Okay, and they state a similar isoparametric inequality, but for the case of fx equals to x power uh, three fourths plus delta. Okay, and I just and also another remark is that uh, Gregory just tell me that in fact they have a, a nice nice way to to obtain uh, the this uh, smallest uh, path disconnecting the boundary from infinity in the discrete uh, thanks to a bijection and in, in some sense this uh, law. The law of, of the smallest uh, length should be uh, explicit and is a Rayleigh uh, distribution. But here we only need uh, this, uh, the, the, the tails uh, near zero in some sense. Okay, and just like a, a, a consequence of this result, if uh, we, so we, because we, we want to use this, uh, this, uh, this result combined with our uh, cutting of the Brownian plane. So if you take your infinite Brownian disk here and you, you cut uh, the first time the boundary has level Z here. And if you, we want to know, for example, what is the, the probability of having a path that stays inside this annulus and that this path is of length smaller than epsilon. Okay. And in fact, okay, you can control it also by an epsilon square. You can have this minoration and okay, to prove that is not very difficult. It's just, well, to have this, you need, you have three, three possible cases, just your case one is uh, but you have this, uh, your infinite Brownian disk. The first time it touches Z. The first time it touches Z. And so what do, okay. So, uh, we're going, sorry, we're going to, we're going to use the theorem. So if we want to use, do the, use the theorem, you take the infinite Brownian disk here. And we know that the probability of having a path 
this connecting of order epsilon is of order epsilon square. So to have this in this event, what, what can you have? OK, so your path is here, for example, something like this. So it stays upside this annulus here. The case, the second possible case is just, OK, so here you have to there. The second possibility is your path stays inside this annulus. So it's the event that we want to, to control. And the case three okay. Okay, so you are not outside this annulus, so you have a point. Uh, okay, you, you are not, uh, you have a point outside this annulus because you are not in case two. And you are not in this case either, so you have another point in this annulus here. So it means that your path with length smaller than epsilon should connect these two boundaries. So it's, it's in case three here, the length, okay, the length here is. Uh, is uh, bigger than this quantity. Okay. Ah yes. Okay. So these are the three possibilities. You and this case is, you know, that is just by theorem one by scaling, is just your constant c one. Epsilon square divided by z and a two here. This is what you want to control. This, in fact, is quite easy to. It's just a, it's, it's an easy process to determine to, to compute. This, in fact, is a little o or epsilon square. And so, just using an union bond, you obtain that the probability on the of the case two is bigger than some constant epsilon square. OK, so now, okay. so now we are going to use to these two results to obtain our inequality, is isoparametric inequality. And so now it's just to use, in some sense, borel Contelli. And uh, OK, so this inequality here, so we are going to, to, to prove that if the series diverge, then the light off. So we want to, to we are going to start by showing that if we have this quantity is equal to infinity, then the probability that the infimum is positive is equal to zero. So what, what we do is just okay, we have this uh, trivial inequality. Okay, uh, why do we have that? It's just uh, Okay, maybe I'll go just here. Uh, okay, so you, you have your Brownian plane. And you have level Tz. Okay, plus one. And your level here. So if you have here a path in red, a small path, well, here you have a Jordan domain by Jordan theorem. And so your infimum on the left is, OK, the volume of A is smaller than the volume of this annulus here. The volume of A is, small, A is smaller than, smaller than the, the, the volume of this, this uh, L and the boundary length is just the smallest uh, length of a path staying here that disconnects the boundary from uh, the, the root from infinity. So this, uh, 
this uh, inequality is uh, just uh, is just a direct consequence of uh, the construction of, of L. Okay, and the nice thing here is that these two quantities, this one and this one, are independent by construction. Okay, so and what? Okay, they they depend on this, but this is just the log of the volume of the L, and we have we understand very well the volume of an L. We know the Laplace. Uh, transformation and okay it's, it's very easy to control it and in fact the log of this quantity is smaller than some constant uh, times n so it's very easy to control just you use uh, ball Contelli uh, using uh, computing the moments and it works very nicely and so once you have this okay to show that this quantity here at the right is equal to zero, but you, you only need to, to show that this quantity here is smaller than this one, than, for example, you fix some epsilon to epsilon divided by f four times nh uh, infinitely often. So you are going to use borel contelli because your, now your variables are actually independent. And, uh, Okay, you have this uh, direct uh, inequality because the variables are independent and you have the scaling property. So uh, this is just, uh, okay, there is nothing uh, to, to prove here. Just you take the, I'm going to write it, but. Okay, so you take the probability Okay, well, I'm not using the same notation. So here I denote the probability by uh, theta zero to say that the, the boundary is equal to zero. And you want to know when this quantity and the volume of the annulus young. This quantity here is as small as than epsilon. And okay, this you can just say that it is enough that the 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 length here to be as small as than epsilon uh, times z n plus one half. And to, okay. and to have the volume to be uh, bigger than z n uh, plus one. Okay, this is a trivial thing. And then you just use that the variables are independent, and then you use your scaling property, invariance property, and you have this inequality. And so you, you know, uh, we know that this quantity here is epsilon square. Uh, so this, this quantity, this event here has probability of order epsilon square divided by x four times nh square. So you take the, zone, the, the sum of this it just you use borel contelli to deduce that the infimum here should be uh, smaller than epsilon, and this is true for any epsilon, and so this quantity here should be equal to zero. Okay? And to, to obtain the reverse uh, implication is the same kind of, uh, of procedure in some sense, it just here, we are not even to use uh, random uh, levels. We are just going to We are just going to Where is the chuck here? Up. Up, huh? Just we 
Okay. For some A here, we consider the, the, the levels uh, M, so that you have here two M. And, uh, okay. Okay, we are going to, to decompose in power of two, this. And for some uh, domain de, de, of Jordan, the Jordan domain here, A, we are going to look at the first level such that you have, you control your volume like this. Okay. And, okay, so then you have two possibilities. The first one is that the, the, the all of radius 2m minus 1 is inside the interior of A. In this case, okay, in this case, A is here. And so A is disconnecting this all from infinity. And so the, the, the length of the boundary of A should be bigger than, the, than L, uh, than the smallest length disconnecting this all from infinity. Okay, and your second possibility is that the infimum, I, that the, the, the interior does not contain the all of radius 2n minus 1. And then, okay, if it's not the case, what you have is, uh, okay, where is the, okay, if you don't contain, if you don't contain this all here, it means that the, the, um, the, the boundary of A has to contain one point inside the, the L. And as your volume is bigger than the volume of the L of radius 2m, then it means that you have one point upside. And so the length of the boundary of A has to be uh, bigger than the distance between these two boundaries because it's connecting them. Okay, so you have this uh, trivial bound here. And so what you obtain is this is the uh, inequality, okay? Uh, that is that the infimum by this bigger than the minimum between these two infimum here. So this one is very easy to, to study it because uh, as I have already said, the, we understand very well the volume of the L, okay, in, in this uh, work of, uh, Jean-François and Nicolas, they, they, they state the Laplace transform and we can uh, compute the moments. And okay, you, use, you only use borel Contelli again and scaling invariance. And the sec and this one, okay, is, is, is more difficult because here uh, what you have is, okay, what you have here is the all of radius m power m plus one and here is the smallest length disconnecting the all of radius m uh, to uh, power m. So you, don't ha you cannot apply the, in a direct way the, the Markov property. So you need, okay, you need to, to do really uh, explicit computation and it's, okay, it's like all the inequalities and this kind of, of procedure. But the idea is if you take these two objects independent, you can just prove it by Boyle Contelli that this infimum is positive. And in some sense, these two quantities are positively correlated. Okay, if your if your all has a very big volume, the smallest length disconnecting it uh, has to be uh, uh, big in some sense. Okay, so but it's it's more difficult. It's more technique in some sense. Okay, so uh, I told about other models. Uh, okay, this you can. Okay, this uh, is, you can translate this uh, result directly for the infinite Brownian disk, of course, because it's, ups is, it's drawn in inside the Brownian plane. You can also state the same result for the Brownian map, because the Brownian map is locally, is over, okay, it looks like near the root, it looks like uh, the Brownian plane, so you can stand the same result. And, uh, okay, this, uh, uh, Okay, you can use the same kind of techniques, for example, to study, uh, for example, for the Brownian half plane, you have the root. 
and you can study isoperimetric inequalities from this uh, point here. So now you are going to, to look at Jordan domains that contain this, this point here. And the same kind of technique is going to give you the same kind of result, but the exponent two is just a, an exponent one. Okay? It should work exactly the same, but we don't have the Markov, the Markov property, so we can not uh, use uh, well, the, the Markov property should work, but it's not stated yet. So, but, but well, the techniques are, are quite, you know, the only thing you need to have in some sense is a Schaeffer-like bijection with a continuous tree with positive labels, and you can use all this machinery in some sense. Uh, I have how more time left? It's almost done, no? Okay. There is any question? Uh, ten, minutes. Uh, ten minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. Questions? Because if it's not, I talk about uh, Bessel process and, <laughs> and maybe. Questions? <laughs> you wish. No question. Question. Okay. Let, let, let us thank you first. Uh, Uh, so you, you stated the Markov property that uh, you get uh, exploring those surfaces with respect to starting from the root and uh, making mm -hmm. the level rise. So first of all, you, I, I guess this could be extended to stopping times, right? Well, it depends on, the, on your filtration in some sense, because here what we use is that the TZ here is defined. It only depends on the boundary. <laughs> If it depends on the, the whole geometry below, I stop uh, the first time when I see a tentacle, uh, which is uh, yes, in some uh, as high as a uh, like current uh, level. Because what, what I use here is that this process is cut lag and you have, uh, but it's, it's not so easy to, to, okay, what you want to do is you take some kind of thing like this. Uh, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and okay, so what is really what does it mean? And and the problem is that okay, your distance here is quite complicated because it's, you have extended to the boundary. So to show that it's actually a cut lag, for, for example, and you can is is I try to do that at the first time, but the first time, but it's it's not it's not easy at all. It should be true. But I would like the second part of the question. So what would be a Markovian exploration in the Boolean, whatever? But it's always the same thing. The problem is how, to, how do you define an exploration? So now you define just... Epsilon exploration along the, the peak of... Okay, so if you want to do that, you, don't, you need a more, uh, another Markov pr uh, property and what you want to show is, uh, okay, for example, you have uh, your infinite Brownian disk, and you don't want to explore it like this, you want to take a point here and look at the points that are at distance r from epsilon from here, from this, uh, from this point, and okay, you fill in the, the, the uh, bonded connect components, and what you want to, to, to say is that if you, condition on this uh, length here. Here you have, a, again, an infinite Brownian disk mm -hmm. with uh, the right one. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so this, uh, this is not proven, so it's not, um, but, okay, yes, it's, it's, it is true, and I see more or less how to prove it. What, what you need in some sense is a, to show that what you are going to do is, is to, to start with the Brownian disk, which is a finite, uh, abundant version of this. And what you want is to understand, to fix some boundary here, and to understand distances to this uh, subset of the boundary and not the boundary itself. Uh, uh, and I have a candidate for this, this object, but it's, it's not, okay, so, uh, Maybe in a few years I can uh, answer, but the, in, if you want the right object here, 
uh, is an excursion of the Brownian uh, an excursion of the, uh, of, the, of the Brownian motion, and you have a Brownian snake uh, branching inside, and you cut the snake when they touch, when they hit level uh, zero. Mm -hmm. So you use uh, the ASIC measure and all the Jean-Francois technology. And uh, so this, when you condition on this, uh, on the on the quantity of, uh, okay, so in the exit time here, so in the quantity of uh, points that hit level zero, and in the on the length on the of the Brownian excursion, so if the Brownian excursion is L1 and this quantity is L2, this should uh, by a Schaeffer bijection should give you an infinite Brownian disk with length L1 plus L2. Ah, sorry, a uh, Brownian disk with uh, boundary length L1 plus L2 and a, um, a distinguished part of the boundary of length L2. You can, for example, uh, guess that this is the right thing to do because you can take, for example, uh, Bettinelli and Mirmont construction of the Brownian disk. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so it's is without the, the cutting here. And when, okay, just you cut, you cut. Look, so it should be a Brownian disk. <laughs> uh, another way to see it, uh, okay, no, that, that's, okay. It is it, an object that appears a lot. So if you take the, the new construction of Jean-Francois of the Brownian disk with distances to, the, to a distinguished point on the boundary, so you obtain, okay, uh, and you cut at some level, you obtain this. And in some sense, it's just uh, you are doing a peeling here. But the, the problem is that, okay, uh, I used to work directly in the continuous, so I, I don't know really how to, to prove this convergence. But in some sense, this is also a, a version of uh, the construction of by Mirmont again uh, with uh, the Brownian, uh, uh, okay. The Brownian map with uh, two, uh, two, 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 two distinguished points and the distance is, okay, with, uh, okay. should be related to that, but, but, but again, it's, 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 it's not, it's, it is hard even to make sense of this object because you have to condition on this length here at the same time that you condition in this length and it's not clear, it's not, Okay, it's not so so easy, but but uh, once we if if you prove that, then you can uh, prove a lot of uh, you can okay you can state the Markov property, mm -hmm. you can try to do some growth fragmentation, you can. Uh, I'm trying to do it, but uh, it's not yet. Uh, it's not for tomorrow. Uh, But, but, <laughs> but then it's another difficulty that is you want to take epsilon going to zero and okay. Uh, you know in the GFF they took, uh, they took the other way around, they say what, what is the local set of the set so that if you plug outside then you get the good. Yes, you, you have your, like your QLE. QLE and, uh, yes, but you, you have this kind of property and, and uh, but Okay, it's, 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 there are technicalities here that is that there are, but uh, you can use this to 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 obtain. Uh, okay. Thank you again.